I, I stayed away. I had my parents with me. I didn't want to have them looking over my shoulder. Um, this is fun. This is a really fun thing for me, but just a couple of things. What a weird contrast of two things going on today. Um, Donald Trump is making this outrageous and unsupported allegation that folks are coming in, illegal immigrants are coming into the country to try to affect the election. And that is completely, completely consistent with the language that he has used about Mexicans and illegal immigrants since the start of the campaign. Even the other night when I pressed Mike Pence on this, he said, oh, you're whipping out that Mexican thing again. Mexicanos no son things. They're, they're humans, right? Um, but this latest thing about, oh, the Mexicans or the illegal immigrants are coming in to destabilize elections. And today is the very day that our DNI has said they now have it absolutely cold that Russia is trying to destabilize the American election. Behind hacking of state boards of elections, the DNC and others, with a clear intent to try to destabilize an election on November 8th. This is the same Russia that Donald Trump encouraged during the week I was at the convention in Philadelphia. I can't remember the precise date, but he got on stage and encouraged Russia to engage in cyber espionage to try to help him win the election. It's a Donald Trump that has very, very close ties to Russia. Every day more and more things come out about Trump advisors that are working with Putin or working on Russian pipeline deals or, or, or you know, all the story about Paul Manafort and his connection to Russia. I, I don't know of an instance in the history of this country where there has been such clear evidence that a foreign nation is trying to destabilize an election in the United States. Um, there, there might be an incident in the past, but I'm not aware of it if there is. That just shows one additional reason why the stakes in this election are so high. We have to participate to show that no dictator of any other nation can come in and think that they can push voters around and, and affect the outcome of an election. And that Donald Trump has treated that at a minimum with a cavalier attitude and at a maximum actually encouraging folks to do it is shocking. And so with that, I'll let it go and answer your questions. Senator, how have you been monitoring the situation with Hurricane Matthew? Have you been in touch with any officials in the border or something? I've been monitoring it very carefully. I have not had conversations with officials, but obviously um, we uh, I have a, uh, one, my son lives in North Carolina right now, he's deployed overseas, but you know, he lives down right near Wilmington, so I've been watching that particularly the case and also watching the effect that it might have on Virginia. So I'm probably monitoring it through looking at the very news sources that you guys represent. And um, and we're, uh, Hillary put out a good statement this morning. As a former governor, you know, the main thing you want people to do is just listen to their mayors and governors as they're getting safety information. That's very important. You said Senator, Trump, uh, Trump's comments about illegal immigrants coming in to, to, to vote have been consistent with his past. Yeah. How, but you really characterize how those comments have been. Well, just d disrespect for the community. I mean, from the very beginning, you know, this, the, the Mexicans are rapists and criminals, um, challenging Judge Curiel, again and again and again going after immigrant communities. And when I tried to bring that up the other night, you know, Governor Pence wants to laugh that off as if, if it's nothing serious. I can tell you the folks here think it's serious. As I talk to them, they understand the difference between words of inclusion and words of hatred and disrespect. They, ha they feel under the pressure of a disrespect. I'll tell you a story that I heard not long ago. There's a friend in Northern Virginia who's from Venezuela, and he and his family had to leave Venezuela because of political, they were, in, you know, of a minority opposition party. They had to leave Venezuela, and it was a very t a traumatic experience for them. He was watching TV with his, with his son, who's now 12 or 13 years old, recently, and they were doing a story about Trump's words of hatred for Latinos and Latino immigrants, and his boy turned to him and said, Dad, are we going to have to leave a second country? And he was, my friend was telling me this story. This is what people are afraid of. When they hear these words of disrespect, they're not saying, oh, it's just campaign rhetoric. We don't need to worry about it. No, they are afraid. And I think that that is something that is a huge motivator, and it ought to be a huge motivator. But now we have an additional motivator, that a, a, a dictator of another country is trying to put his thumbprint on the outcome of, a, of an American presidential election. And that raises the stakes to a, a level unlike any I've ever seen, and that means that we've got to show that we're not letting anybody push us around. Senator, what would your message be to Vladimir Putin over these next couple of weeks and then after the election, given what you just what the government has accused him of and what you've been just been There's got to be a consequence for this. Look, we you know when when uh, when 
Putin and Russia violated international law by invading a sovereign nation, the Crimea, uh, we have imposed sanctions on them for doing that. And we don't want to impose sanctions on anybody. Uh, respect international law and there will be no sanctions. But there has to be a consequence for this, but the most important consequence, because it will, the Senate's not in session, and so that will be something we'll have to work through. The most important consequence is for American voters to stand up and suggest we're not going to let you push us around. But he should be held responsible for that himself, it's not just the, the Russian. The, the DNI has basically concluded that they believe this hacking is directly related to the Russian government, first, and second, it is directly related to an intent to at a minimum, destabilize or delegitimize the election. It, I would, I do not want to. I don't don't want to take it to the next step and say express a preference in the election, but at least to delegitimize or destabilize it. That is a very very serious offense, and we can't let it go unanswered. There will be time to figure out what the consequence should be later. But the best defense to get it right against it right now is for everybody who's patriotic to participate to show that we're not going to let somebody, the dictator of another nation. Um, put his thumb on the scale in an American Wait, political Wait, you're, you're saying he's not trying to influence the outcome? Just destabilize it? I, I, I'm saying I, I want to I, I be careful about how I state this because I have read what the DNI said this morning, but I would actually like to talk to the DNI and get a security briefing and determine what more I might say. Um, it, at a minimum, I think this is clearly a direct attempt by the Russian government to, de to delegitimize and destabilize the electoral outcome, whether it is an, an attempt to influence the direction of the election in terms of candidates, I don't want to yet make that statement, although I may make it soon. But do you think do you think the Russian government or Putin in particular want Trump to win? I, mean, I think they would be very happy based on what he said about Trump. But look, e even if you don't have a preference, if you try to delegitimize the, the an electoral outcome by trying to hack into state electoral boards, that is that has a serious consequence whether or not you're trying to express a preference for a candidate. That that is inexcusable. But before I before I take it to the next step, I would need to know more. Is there something yeah, other than Trump the brag with all the terms about kissing, groping, trying to have sex with women in the 2005 conversation? It was just obtained by the Washington Post. When you're a star, they let you do it. Uh, what do you make of that? And it, it's just, I mean, it's it makes me sick to my stomach. I I don't like to even say the words that he's used in the past when he calls women pigs, dogs, and slobs. I didn't like saying it on stage the other night with my mom and my wife sitting in the front row. But th this is behavior that's just outrageous. And so that there would be a new story that would have more statements like this of this kind. I mean, gosh, I'm sad to say that I'm not surprised. I should be, I should be surprised and shocked. I'm sad to say that I'm not. Senator, what is your reaction to Donald Trump that saying such a part of this, this has been so discredited. I, I heard that this morning, and you know, my staff tells me things, and I say, okay, you're telling me, but you got to show me this. You got to show me this. Would he really do this? This to me, it's just, it's just like bolted together with the birther lie. It's just perpetrating a myth. Why would you perpetrate a myth? Why would you perpetrate a myth that has been completely discredited? And why did the myths that you perpetrate all kind of have a really similar sentiment connecting them, which is whipping up racial division or whipping up animosity against immigrants. This is the common theme in the sky. And that he would decide, you know, right before this debate that's really meaningful, right in the closing stretch of the campaign, I, I guess I got to win voters over. Is this that he would think this is the way to win voters over? And that he could not admit that he was wrong about that, I, I, I hardly have words to. I, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, on, Russia, on, Russia, yeah. on Russia, um, in the debate, you and Mike Pence both agreed that there should be a no-fly zone in Russia. That's been Secretary Clinton. In, in Syria. And sorry, in Syria, yeah. that's been their stated uh, intent. Mike Pence said that the U.S. government should be willing to target Syrian forces. Under the Clinton administration, your policy, should the U.S. be willing to engage Russia and engage Syrian forces this, militarily? The, 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 I think there's a really important difference. He wants a, a no-fly zone. That's a military term. I'm not primarily focusing upon the military. We should have a humanitarian zone that is to enforce the U.N. Security Council resolution of February 2014 that called for cross-border delivery of humanitarian relief for people seeking 
haven and refuge. Should that be protected? Yes, it should be. How would it be protected? We would have to work with an international coalition of nations, especially to provide to provide air coverage. That's what we would need Secretary to do. Secretary Clinton has stated it would be a no-fly zone. So under well, the no-fly zone. But I just, but I just, I just want to say. If you say no-fly zone, what you're suggesting is this is primarily a military mission. It's not. It's primarily a humanitarian mission because it's to carry out a humanitarian resolution by the UN Security Council. But she advocates for the no-fly zone. She, she said there would need to be military air coverage that's protection. But I think you've got to call it the right thing because if you call it the wrong thing, it suggests that this is about a military. This is primarily about protecting the, the continuing millions of Syrians who are displaced from their homes inside the country and giving them a safe haven. But we would work together with other nations to make sure that that safe haven could be protected. And whether it's from the atrocities of Bashar al-Assad or ISIL, we would have to protect people there from atrocities.